Now that we have a feel for data types in C-sharp, let's actually get in and use them in a program. And so I'm going to open up Visual Studio. Now remember, this is different than Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code works great for web uh, technology, so HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript, even Python. It works really well for those things, but to develop .NET, our best uh, software integrated development environment by far is going to be Visual Studio, which is just great to work in as a developer. And so uh, we want to get this open. If you have not yet installed it, uh, I would recommend going back and watching the video where I walk through that installation. But once we have it installed, we can come in here. Now we're going to do a lot of these different things um, during this course, but for now what we're going to do is say create a new project. And then what you'll see here is there's just a whole ton of templates. So they've got templates for all these different things. And what they're trying to do uh, with this environment is make programming as easy and as pleasant as possible. And so depending on what you choose, it'll go set up a structure for that particular uh, setup. And so if I want to do, for example, a, uh, well, this is one we'll use quite a bit, ASP.NET Core Web App Model View Controller, then we can click on that and, and set that up. If we want to do Azure functions, we can click on that and it'll set up a structure for us. And so this is super helpful. But while we're just learning C Sharp, I think the, the best and easiest thing is to keep it simple. And we'll just use a standard console app. So just uh, command line stuff, um, only you know text, no, no images or anything. It just helps to keep you know it simple and not have all that peripheral stuff that sometimes makes it a lot more complex. And so I'm gonna choose console app C, C Sharp. And you can see that this will run on Linux or Mac or Windows. It'll run at the console. And so I'm going to select that and then choose next and then give it a name. I'm going to call it C Sharp Fun. And then we have this box here that says place the solution and the project in the same directory. Yours may be unchecked. Um, in these projects that we're going to build, there's the project folder which contains everything to do with the project. And then there's also a solution file that keeps track of different settings for the project. And it's saying, do you want to have the file in the same folder as the rest of the project, or do you want to have it in its own folder? And what you're really doing here is indicating whether you want to have another subdirectory that says C Sharp Fun slash C Sharp Fun. The solution file would be in this one. The project files would be in the, the subdirectory. I've found when working with the console, it's better to put them both in the same folder. For the other apps that we'll create in .NET, it's better, I think, in my mind to, to have the solution be separate. It seems to work better. But for now, if this is unchecked, let's make sure we check this. All right, and then once we've done that, we can click Next. And then we get to choose our version of .NET. Now, there's lots of different versions, and uh, the newest one is .NET 8. And so I'm going to select .NET 8 and uh, then I'm going to click this create button and that'll take just a second to build our little project and there it is so what it's done is it's built a file for us called program.cs .cs is a C sharp extension file and then it's even built for us just trying to make our life easier again um, Microsoft's doing everything they can with Visual Studio to make programming just be a dream. And so in this case, they've even written out Hello World for you so you don't need to do it yourself. You know, the traditional, I'm just going to, into a new language for the first time and, uh, you know, you're going to type in Hello World. It's done it for you. And so um, if we run this program, we'll see that sure enough, we can see it'll print out here in a second our Hello World. And so the program's running. Now the other thing that uh, that happens is that, um, especially in this new version of .NET, is that it's going to hide stuff that you don't need to see, that's just assumed. And so in this case, we've got this uh, console.writeline, but it's not inside any class, any method, and that's because every c -sharp program needs to have a file named program.cs, and it's going to have a main method in it, and that is what this file is. Now, if I want to see the detail of it, I can hover over this uh, screwdriver. 
I might have to click here on this to get it, but then I can hover over this little screw, screwdriver icon and I can say convert to a program main style program so I can see the detail of it. And if I click on this, it looks like a more traditional program you might have seen with that same line. All of this stuff was just hidden before. And so I just want to walk through this kind of one step at a time and, and uh, make sure this, this will be a review for many and that's okay. So we have here a class. Now in this case, they call it an internal class. Um, and that's specific to this program CS file. Normally it would be a public class or a private class, perhaps like you've done in the past. But the, a class is just an organizational unit. And so all code just can't float out somewhere. It has to belong uh, to some entity. And so the class is the thing we create for the code to belong to. And we give the class whatever name we want to, but every C Sharp class or .NET, you know, when we start building that application, needs to have a program.cs file because that's where the program goes to, to start. Okay, and then we've got some braces on here showing everything that is part of that class. We can have second classes as part of this file and we would separate those out by braces. That's a totally different topic that we'll save for another time. Um, and then inside this class, we have a method. Now this method is called the main method. So we have here public and, or sorry, private, but, but you've seen before this can be public or private, depending on do we want other classes to be able to see and access this method inside this class? And if we do, we make it public. If we don't, we make it private. And then if you've done anything with object-oriented programming, one of our other levels is protected, um, which we can talk about this at a later time. Why is this one private? And the reason is because nothing should be calling the main class. The main class is the thing that starts the program. And so we shouldn't be calling the, the main method. And so they make it private. Um, this will look very familiar, by the way, if you've, if you've programmed in uh, Java before. Static. Static is something that often confuses individuals who are trying to learn programming. And it just, in, in my experience, takes time and exposure. And finally, you start to gain an understanding of what it is. But basically, do we want anything that's done inside this method to apply to the class itself, or do you want it to apply to the instances of the class that are going to be built? If we want it to apply to the class itself, if we want it to stick, then we say static. And if we don't want it, then we leave static off. And that's how that works. Now, I look at this always in terms of, uh, when I talk about object-oriented programming, in terms of a mold. My parents a long time ago went to, to visit Spain. And one of the things they wanted to do there was get Yadro, which is this special porcelain statues that are super expensive and, and very nice. And um, anyway, so they wanted to bring home some Yadro that was being built there. Somewhere there, there's a mold that's building these porcelain statues. And so are we talking about the mold or are we talking about the statue that comes out of the mold? What we'll do in object-oriented programming is we'll create classes that are the mold. And then we stamp out instances of the classes, which are products being generated from this uh, class that we actually use in our programs. And so static says, do I want to make apply these, whatever you're doing, do I want it to happen to the, the mold, the class itself, or do I want it to happen to the instances? All right, and then we have here the types. So we, it, what are we going to return? Is it, is it an integer? Is it a string? Is it a Boolean? What is going to be coming out of this method? And if the answer is nothing, which in the case of the main method, we can't return anything because it's the first thing being called, then we're going to put a void there to indicate nothing is going to come out. And then we have main, which is the name of the method. In this case, it needs to be main, but usually we can give it whatever name we want to. So private, static, void, main, and then what goes inside these parentheses is the thing that's going to be returned from this, or sorry, the thing that's being passed into this method. Excuse me, the thing that's being passed into the method. And that's what I want to focus my next video on. Spencer out.